What's cracking guys? Omar Esau here back with another video. Let me open up this video with a question. Have you ever lost some weight, maybe a significant amount of weight, and then immediately or almost immediately within a span of several months, you put the weight back on? In other words, you do the diet, you manage to lose some weight, but then you somehow regain the weight shortly thereafter. Don't worry, this isn't a trick question. It happens to every single person. I've been in that exact same scenario before. What I hope with this short video right now is to illuminate the reason why for most individuals losing weight at a slower or more sensible rate makes a lot more sense and really trying to retain muscle mass when they lose weight. In other words, why truly the tortoise tends to be superior than the hare. I like turtles. When it comes to fat loss, maintaining weight loss, and then overall progress in the gym. So if you just care about getting swole, this is for you. I have to give a huge shout out to Mass Monthly Application and Strength Sports, Eric Trexler, who we had on this channel, did an overview of an article, of a research uh, paper that came out basically examining weight regain, and they found out one of the most accurate predictors if someone was to regain weight or had a higher likelihood of regaining weight were from individuals that lost more muscle mass essentially. So fat-free mass is what they call it, but individuals that tended to have more of that loss, so more muscle loss or more non-fat mass would regain weight. And what would essentially happen, the hunger hormones, uh, their appetite overall, the subjective markers when they would measure it, so before they began uh, doing the study, so it's an eight week trial, and then after, at the conclusion, eight weeks after that, when they fed them the same meal, I think it was basically a pasta meal that was about 300 some calories, they had some subjective markers of how hungry they were or how full they felt. And the individuals that essentially lost more muscle throughout this trial reported being hungrier. And likely what happens, and this makes sense from an evolutionary perspective, what happens when you lose muscle mass, your body starts panicking because you think of all the various functions that you need, need to do uh, back in the day when it comes to, you know, whatever, trying to catch your prey or anything uh, that can be involved with simply surviving. If you lose your muscle mass, you're just less fit overall and less capable of what you need to do. So there's a high premium placed on muscle mass. And so again, this makes sense. But what I see the difference between what you should do, and I think uh, sometimes people simplify too much. Oh, bro, you want to lose weight? Lower your calories. Eat less calorie deficit. I'm like, yeah, congratulations. I don't think you've ever trained anybody in person because it is a lot more nuanced than that. There is more nuance to it simply because for individuals, you have to take into account the rate of weight loss, the goal, how lean that they want to get, the plan or the length of time that they're thinking of, and then the period immediately following after that. Because for some people, the problem isn't that they can't lose weight, is that they do lose weight, but they regain a lot of that fat shortly thereafter. And so how do you set yourself up for success? I've said this before, and there's a reason why I keep showing it, or now, you know, this is would be almost four months after, four months after my fat loss phase where I lost those 20 pounds, I'm within two pounds of the leanest point I was during that phase. So for 16 weeks, I've been eating at maintenance, just enjoying myself, not stressing about anything, but my appetite, overall, how hungry I've been, completely normal. And I credit the approach, and I have to credit, once again, Eric Helms, the whole idea of doing diet breaks, of so doing three weeks on and then one week off or two weeks off, seemed to work really well for me. So I did three of those blocks. And some people, when I was doing that, say, oh man, why are you making it so easy on yourself? Why are you taking all those breaks? Like, shouldn't you just go right after it? And sometimes we perceive a more moderate approach with either weakness or not wanting it bad enough. And what I noticed after doing that, from a psychological perspective, I was chill. I didn't feel anything at all. I didn't feel, oh man, I just died and lost 20 pounds and I need to jump right back into this or I'm gonna regain all this weight. If we lose weight too quickly, so one of the uh, best, let's say, overall guidelines we can give and we could tie it to your actual weight is an attempt to lose per week roughly 0.5 to 1% of your total body weight. So let's use an example. You're 100 kilos. That means roughly per week you should be aiming for about 0.5 kilos to one kilo. 
That means for people who use pounds, about one to 2.2 pounds of weight per week. And that's a sensible approach. But again, a lot of times it can be emotionally driven, right? We want to lose the weight immediately. And so two pounds, well, shit, man, I got to lose 25 pounds. That's going to take me 12 weeks. Let me decrease the calories. Let me increase the cardio. How many times have we heard this before? And we exceed that rate of weight loss. And that really just messes things up in the future because sure, you might lose more weight, but are you losing more fat? Questionable. Are you sacrificing some of the muscle mass that maybe you fought hard to get? Probably. And then do you have a higher likelihood of regaining that fat afterwards? Yes. So overall, when we take a look at the picture, sometimes the more moderate approach makes sense. So I would say for most people, there's no shame in taking a diet break. So eating a maintenance, if you're dieting for at least a week or two weeks until you feel good, and then resuming it again, you want better outcomes and long-term outcomes. So not just immediately when you're done the diet, but what happens six months after that. And so I would say diet breaks, the rate of weight loss that you choose to do. So again, I would say 0.5 to 1% of your total body weight per week is what you should be aiming to do. And then lastly, the level of leanness you want to get to. So I'd say a sensible approach, being flexible, make sure you don't get too dangerously lean, avoid, you know, I'd say excessive implementation of cardio. And then lastly, of course, being on a properly regimented program that has a periodization scheme to it so it allows you to try and maintain your strength or maybe even build it if you're a beginner or intermediate lifter to give your body the best chance to retain the most amount of muscle mass anyways i gotta get out of here thank you so much for watching the video if you enjoyed the video what are you waiting for you made it to the end of the video right here like the damn video and i'll see all you guys my rascals in that next one Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.